Good morning, ITA! My name is Pearly, and I will be doing the story takeover for you today. It's showing you what it's like to live in Busan, South Korea. So, let's go! It is currently 8.30 in the morning. I am walking to school, so every day it's about a 15 minute walk. Um, yeah, so it is right in the city where I live and work. So, a little bit about me. I am 24 years old from Los Angeles, California. I moved to Busan, South Korea in early February of 2021. So I've been living here for about three months now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's finally getting over that hump of the adjustment period of moving to a new country. But yeah, I got my TOEFL certification in the summer of 2020. Um, so like a mid pandemic thing, but you know, super amazing, super convenient to do your tasks at your own pace. Um, so, yeah, learned a lot. So, it is lunchtime and I'm in the bathroom so I could film this privately. Um, but, yeah, just brush my teeth because it is part of the culture here to brush your teeth after every meal, no matter where you are. So, started doing that. Um, so yeah, as for my working hours, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, um, my working hours are 9 a.m. to 6.15 p.m. And Tuesday, Thursdays, it is from 9 o'clock a.m. to 5.30 p.m. This is an example of one of the classrooms. As you might have seen earlier, um, our school isn't in a typical school setting. It's in like in a corporate building. That takes place on the second, fourth, fifth, and sixth floors. And we are actually right across the street from the Lotte Giants baseball stadium. So we get a great view of it from our classrooms. It's pretty cool. So this is one of two teachers' rooms in our school. This is where we come to plan and grade stuff. So there are coworkers who all happen to be ITA alumni as well. Oh. Say hi. This is just a sneak peek of the fruits and vegetables in the grocery store. So generally the cost of living in Korea is cheaper than in the United States. Um, but fruits and vegetables, the prices are a little steeper than what we're used to. And so entering the apartment. So a little place for all of your shoes. This is where I keep my recyclables that I need to take out very soon. And so yeah, this is little apartment. Um, it is a studio. Um, so it's not a lot of room, but it's just me, one person. So it's totally fine. Um, wallpaper is, you know, a little ahead of my time, but you know, it's growing on me. Um, so bathroom um, is called a wet room where essentially the shower is you know all in one place um, in the bathroom so one of the biggest perks of South Korea is that your accommodation and housing is all paid for rent free 
Um, also, when I moved in here, the apartment came with, you know, the necessities such as fridge, hot plate, bed. It also came with the TV, dresser, closet. Um, the couch literally picked up from the dumpster downstairs. Other than that, everything was essentially bought on my own. Um, to be honest, it is difficult, you know, not knowing the native language of the country that you live in. Um, you know, going to restaurants or, you know, the store or just anywhere in public. Um, can't really read any of the signs. Oftentimes, people do approach me speaking Korean, you know, I just don't know what they're saying. So yeah, it could definitely be a struggle. But as for getting away with not knowing any Korean, uh, let's just say translation apps have been my best friend. Uh, yes, I do have a bachelor's degree. It actually is a requirement for you to have one in order to teach English abroad in the country of South Korea. Um, so yeah, I have a degree in economics with a minor in environmental science and policy. Um, I also have a teaching credential in elementary education. So I'd always been interested in, you know, living abroad one way or another for a while now. Um, you know, I figure, you know, so I'm still young before I have to settle down into a career, um, you know, take the opportunity to live abroad. Um, actually, shortly after I graduated college in 2019, I had accepted an offer to teach English in summer camps all around the country of Italy. Um, I did find this also through ITA, uh, but she did not need a TEFL certificate to do this job. Um, so this was to occur during the summer of 2020. And then obviously the pandemic happened, it all got cancelled. I wound up spending that summer taking the online TEFL course. And yeah. Um, so my biggest questions were, how did I find my job and how long did it take to find my job? So shortly after I completed my TEFL course in August of 2020, I reached out to my advisor that ITA assigned to me who was a great help. Um, she gave me a list of recruiters that specifically worked in South Korea. So I wound up working with several of them. Um, each of them, you know, very big help. Um, ultimately, I had four job offers in the country. Um, the one that I did wind up taking in Busan, South Korea um, was with Teacher Tech. Um, so it was super great, super easy, lots of help and resources all through ITA. Um, ultimately, the largest selling point for me to go towards the Hagwon route as opposed to the public school route um, was preference and location. So I believe the only things you truly really need to get to South Korea are a bachelor's degree, a TEFL certificate, and to be a citizen of either the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Ireland, So it is time for me to go to bed to get ready for, you know, the school day tomorrow. But if you made it this far in the takeover, um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you have other questions, I will leave my main Instagram account below so you could ask me any questions you want over there. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Good night.